Can we see Earl or is he on phone? Yule is, uh, oh, sorry, Earl is on the, the phone. We're not going to be able to see him. Okay. Aww. All right, so we have... <laughs> sorry, uh, guys. <laughs> All of our loss. We are here with the <laughs> cast handsome. of the first episode of the new show, Snake in the Grass, uh, where we're going to see four, maybe five people at times competing out in the jungle uh, with trying to accomplish missions. Somebody is going to be some sort of a saboteur. And it is up for the other people to figure out exactly how this is all going to work out. And of course, uh, the premiere of the show is coming up on Tuesday night. I've seen the first like 20 minutes or so to get a sense of how the show is going to go. And here we are uh, now with the first four players, uh, Yule, Earl, Malcolm, and, and Jeff. Um, can, can I ask, uh, Yule, a a any thoughts on uh, why, why Snake in the Grass? You mean like, why are we doing this? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. How'd they how'd they uh, get you to uh, then? Because uh, you're a very accomplished person. What what was it about Snake in the Grass that appealed to you to come out? I I thought it was cool. Like you know, it's it's like a combination of uh, Mafia. I don't know if people have played Mafia and their different mm -hmm. version of that, and and Survivor. And so I I always really like those psychological games where you're trying to like you know. Um, there's a lot of like potential game theory or trying to like figure out who's actually not telling the truth. It's kind of like Survivor, but like on a different level. And I, there was a part of it that I felt like was just super interesting and really appealing. Yeah. Um, Earl, uh, what's different about Snake in the Grass than Survivor for you? Well, it's, it's very, very different. I had no idea. Unlike you, I had no idea what I was getting into. All I was told, like, there's an adventure show. You're going to love it. That was the description. That's all I had. And I just ended up doing it, not knowing the rules, not knowing anything about it. Kind of like what I did with Survivor the first time. Yes. Uh, but it, w it was definitely a great experience. A whole lot of fun. Very adventurous. You know, these guys are fantastic. It was so much fun. You know, great memories, great bonding. So I, I loved it. And the adventure of it all was just, you know, super cool. Something to do because it's been so long since I did Survivor. I mean, that was so long ago. Yeah. So it was time to update it for my kids. <laughs> Can you guys explain a little bit about how the show works? Like, I understand that you are on missions and that there is a one person that is working against the other three and that at the end, uh, you will have to make a determination of uh, who is trying to sabotage the mission. Um, but when you are going on like the the the, the missions across the episodes, uh, like are, are you winning money for accomplishing the missions or are you getting more clues? Clues. So Definitely basically, clues. getting clues. Yeah. So yeah. if we in, win in it, hope of getting the money. Yes. <laughs> right. Right. So for every right, challenge Jeff. we win, we get an additional clue as to who the snake could be. So the snake is wanting to sabotage all of those challenges to prevent those clues from being released, um, and then everyone else is obviously trying to win those challenges. Uh, but the snake, he can't sabotage in a too obvious manner. Otherwise, he gives himself up and game over. So it's a delicate yeah. balance. It's definitely about information gathering. You know, you keep on winning challenges, doing as much as you can to get more information that might lead you to who the snake might be. So that snake does not want you to know anything at all until, you know, as close as they get to the end, the better for them if you have limited information so it's really so tough up, really tough but fun and i'll tell you it makes it like you've run rob's obviously run survivor challenges you mm -hmm. don't have to worry about somebody throwing a wrench in the works on purpose more often than not but all of us were side-eyeing each other the entire time running well I'm yeah. mission challenges whatever you're watching each other constantly during these like to see who's might be intentionally um dragging or intentionally trying to throw the team off. You will, yeah. how did the accommodations compare to being on Survivor? Uh, <laughs> uh, the accommodations were quite a bit better. Uh, we didn't have to like actually make a shelter. Uh, we didn't have to go out to ah. on a nice swim to go number two in the bathroom. Uh, we actually had food. I think for Jeff, it was probably the biggest upgrade in terms of the experience. Like it was funny because when I first when I first saw these guys, I was like, okay, I immediately recognized Malcolm. I immediately recognized um, Earl. 
I see this person and I'm like, wait, that guy looks super familiar. And I realized at some point it was Jeff from Naked and Afraid, which I've seen him before, but I just didn't recognize him with his clothes on. It was kind of, and it was funny because when we we're sleeping overnight, Jeff was like, what, I get this hammock? Like, this is like the best experience I've ever had. So yeah, it was definitely better than Survivor and way, way better than Naked and Afraid. Yeah, Jeff, was this intimidating for you to come in and go into this competition against the three Survivor players? Well, of course, of course it was. Uh, but that's why I took on this challenge. So uh, obviously, Naked and Afraid, I've done six challenges, you know, survived everywhere all over the world. So I knew the jungle part of this challenge. I, I got that. That's my bread and butter. But it was going to be the social game that was going to decide whether or not I won or lost this thing. And I'm going against three masters of, you know, the social survival, uh, survivor game. So I clearly I felt like I was coming in as, um, you know, the underdog of the whole thing. Now, Jeff, did you feel like that any of these three guys have what it takes to make the transition to go to Naked and Afraid XL after this? Oh, no way. Oh, <laughs> I, 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 I laugh immediately at that. I'm like, get the hell out of here. I don't know how to jump out. Seriously, like, oh, oh good God. Hold on here. What are we here? Yeah, that, that actually was a, just a funny question <laughs> for all of us. <laughs> you know. You you realize how much easier, you know, Survivor is. You know, Survivor's hard. It definitely has, you know, the, the elements. But what Jeff was doing on Naked and Afraid, like, that's a whole different, it's like Olympic level stuff yeah. compared to what we did on Survivor. Yeah. But we did right. have the social no part money. that he didn't have to deal with. Yeah. Different prize money. Yeah. It, it's crazy. For what Jeff and those guys doing Naked and Afraid, they should be winning a million bucks. That's I've got it. Insanity. I've got it. I've got to tell you an anecdote. We gave Jeff the hammock that we had. We sleep one night at camp. For this yes. Game. We gave Jeff the hammock. Yul, Earl, and I have sleeping bags for the, and have been well-fed for the first time. And we're all laying down. We're all getting comfy under this pre-built shelter for us. And all of us were grumbling the entire time. Yeah. This Completely the complaining. <laughs> we were just the whiniest yeah. old men possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is like a vacation for yeah. Jeff. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So, uh, Yul, could you tell us a little bit more about how the game works? Yeah, basically, you know, there are four of us, like, we're kind of put on an island, or not an island, on a beach. Um, you know, one of us had been designated as a snake. And, you know, over the course of a series of challenges, you're trying to win the challenge using a combination of teamwork. And if you win the challenge, you get a clue as to the identity of the snake. But of course, the snake is trying to sabotage the challenge without being discovered because the uh, snake doesn't want to be discovered. Um, so it leads to a really interesting dynamic, right? Because you're you're hyper vigilant. You're watching each other. You're trying to do these things, and you're trying to like see, okay, who's like, you know, really not pulling their weight. And in some cases, you know, people may or may not have gotten sick. And you're trying to figure out, like, are they are they just like bullshitting you? <laughs> are mm -hmm. they really sick? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah but you because there's, there's another element to this where it's not just sabotaging the actual challenges, but it's actually the distraction and the deflection that they have to do with the line. So let's talk about the, the biggest part of it. Like you really have to distract by misleading everyone on what you say about yourself, who you are, all of those things. Even if we got all the, the clues right, it doesn't mean that we're going to know who the snake is because they might have told us a completely different story on who they really are. So that's what makes it really tough. To that point, Rob, all of the misleading. A little bit, yeah, if you've seen, it's not, it's not just a factoid. Right. You get, it, it's a little obscure and it can be interpreted in different ways. So we're all looking, at, we're working through and we're talking about a lot of very smart guys, like three of us at least, Jeff, maybe a little bit. And we're all really working. <laughs> <laughs> we're all really <laughs> working through it, like really trying to like think of all the different ways that this turn of phrase could be you know, is it very direct or is it, you know, are there, is there room for interpretation in this line yeah. of each clue? Yeah, the clues are riddles. They're yes. actually riddles. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got that from uh, the, the first episode and they're worded in like uh, interesting ways that could have uh, multiple meanings, uh, which really yeah. get everybody talking. Are, are there any things that uh, any of the survivors picked up from their survivor playing time that, uh, that are useful skills for a game like Snake in the Grass? 
Um, good question. I would say maybe trying to read people a little bit. You have to mm-hmm. do that a lot on Survivor. I mean, the paranoia is all the same. Uh, it's a very different type of game. It's just different. I mean, you're under the clock. You're, you're under the gun the whole time. And so you are saying and doing whatever is possible to just survive through the 36 hours of how this is going to be. So uh, I don't know, guys. What do you think? Do you think what, what part of Survivor you think, you know, the skills that you might have used in this, this kind of game? I think the challenges were pretty similar. So I think we were, it seemed yeah. like naked and afraid, you're not doing these kind of challenges where you're trying to solve puzzles or navigate things together. So I thought that was easier. I, the other thing I think was helpful was, so in Survivor, you're always trying to assess people out. You're trying to assess them. Are they really telling the truth? Are they portraying themselves as differently than how they really are? And so I think there's a lot of that involved. And there is more deception where you're intentionally trying to mislead people or trying to portray yourself differently than what your true intentions might otherwise be. I'm guessing on Naked and Afraid, you don't have a lot of that. You're just basically trying to like work together. So I think, uh, you know, without revealing anything, uh, whoever's job it is to be the snake probably had, you know, if they had survivor experience would have had maybe more relevant experiences because again, you're, you're trying to mislead. You're trying to like shade the truth in a certain way and, and trying to like, and the other thing I think was relevant is in a way you're kind of building alliances too, right? Based on who you think is aligned with your interest or not, you're trying to get people to believe you and trust you. And so there's a lot mm-hmm. of that that happens on Survivor. We're trying to build empathy and build trust so that you have more credibility. And I think that works yeah. whether you're not the snake or you are the snake, because either way you want people to believe yeah. you. Right. Yeah. Did yeah. Any- and again, that, that, that time limit is a big deal. Yeah. Because you know, on Survivor, we have all day to talk to each other and figure things yeah. out. Like you're literally around them 24 seven. We have very, very limited time to talk about anything. So yeah, that made it hard because in addition to the challenges, we're we're constantly trying to get clues just by the conversations with we're having with each other, right? And so we're talking to each other. But whereas on Survivor, you have a lot more time to really get to know people and potentially catch them in any consistencies or any kind of lies that might be telling you. Like here, it's because mm-hmm. such a compressed time, you don't have that much uh, you know, just opportunity to engage. It, it made that part of a little bit harder. And I'll add yeah. one thing before we move on. Sorry, I know Rob's trying to, but one more thing. I got backwards in my head as we were trying to think about the voting system for this game. Yeah, because can you explain I, that? I, 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 so the idea behind the game is that the three people who are not the snake have to all unanimously agree on who is the snake in order to win. And then they split the prize pool. Uh, if it's not unanimous, then... Uh, the snake wins the whole thing, or if it, the snake's misidentified, then the snake wins the whole thing. But what was going in my head, I'm sitting there with Yule and Earl and Jeff on the beach, uh, maybe 12 hours before we had to decide who our vote for the snake would be. And I kept reverting to survivor voting rules in my head. That might have just been me, but I was like, how do I make sure? Like, it was like everyone was like, oh, it's so if it's 2 2, it'll go to fire, and then uh, you have to make a fire against yeah. the snake. <laughs> Right. It was, yeah. It was trying yeah. to keep the rules yeah, yeah. straight across games was a <laughs> struggle. Yeah. <laughs> I, I agree 100% with that. So mm-hmm. you definitely, you know, the experience of Survivor definitely starts to overshadow parts of how you play this game. Mm-hmm. It, we just can't help it. You know, that was my first introduction to being on TV in this kind of situation. So here I am doing something else again on TV in a jungle situation again. And you, you want to use your survivor skills and your survivor rules, but they're just completely different. But like Malcolm said, you can't help it. You can't help but like go through the, the system of survivor for this game. For sure. Did any of you do anything interesting to prepare for going out to be on Snake in the Grass? Uh, I was on a two week vacation in Hawaii before, <laughs> I, right before I got on the snake yeah. grass. That's how I prepared. Yes. <laughs> like literally I flew from Hawaii to Costa Rica. <laughs> so, yeah. How about you guys? I was, I, uh, I was recovering from malaria from my most recent naked and afraid in the Amazon. So oh, I had, yeah, that's I had no had joke. Jeff. Out of a, I had just gotten out of the hospital a few weeks earlier. So mm-hmm. I got out of the hospital basically, you know, like I have a friend that to happened run to a couple miles and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jeff, are you on another big and afraid? Where are you? Like, is that a real background? That's his house. You all. Um, this, yeah, th- th- this is my house. So I'm in Idaho, really? but I'm, I'm mentally at the beach right now <laughs> with you guys. <laughs> you have palm trees or what is that in Idaho? You're kidding. 
Uh, yeah, no, this is palm trees in Idaho. Yeah. yeah. With there are no, yeah. there's a palm tree in <laughs> Idaho. Come on. <laughs> 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 it's funny we're doing this during an interview because we're not really on speaking terms. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of assholes. <laughs> uh, what I, I I was trying to figure out, like I I thought maybe it might be something like the mole. Like remember that kind of yeah, show sure, a long time ago sure. with Anderson Cooper. So I was half expecting like instead of Bobby Bones jumping out, like you see like Anderson Cooper like coming out here and basically interrogating us. So I watched the whole. I watched the first two episodes of that or two uh, uh seasons of that and then beyond that i was just i mean we i had such short notice like i was pretty out of shape and I, it just yeah i remember i went to a trainer and i'm like hey look i have a week can you get me in shape I'm like i can't get you in shape i can probably get you to not throw up the first time you try to run uh, but that's about it mm -hmm. so, yeah we, listen to I, you all talking about that like here i am sipping on my ties laying on the beach no, this he's talking about. Yeah, you know, I watched two episodes of The Mole, and I did this, and I did that one week of training, dude. <laughs> I had a margarita I, I in my hand on poolside. Okay, I brought the quarantine physique to the beach. I just did not. It was yeah, it wasn't good from a physical standpoint. But we were, we did have a sense that it was going to be a little bit like The Mole, so I was binge watching The Mole beforehand. Okay, so you guys are lucky. Doing... I did not know that. I did not have that information. <laughs> Well, that wasn't super helpful. It, the actual game was not. Helpful, like, but but now you were doing a lot of ab workouts, right? I mean, you were basically trying to get your core toned by you, just like throwing up. Yeah, well, if you drink enough beer, you can you can really expand that core. And that that was I was I was increasing torque potential beforehand. Well, you were just like throwing up all the time as well, and I, I thought that was yeah, yeah that crunches, yeah. yeah, for sure. All right, um, that if if you want to hear more from these guys, okay, on uh, of course. Uh, you could watch the premiere of uh, Snake in the Grass coming up on Tuesday night. Uh, and Snake in the Grass premieres on uh, USA on Monday night, August 1st at 11 p.m. Uh, that's uh, right after Monday Night Raw, one of my favorites. So uh, be sure to see uh, four, uh, four more gladiators competing on Monday nights over on USA. Um, Guys, thank you so much for coming on and talking a little bit about uh, what's going on on Snake in the Grass. Really looking forward to uh, seeing how it all plays out and seeing who the actual snake is here with this four. Christopher, that's right. Okay. <laughs> Gr no, great talking to you so all. Much, okay, best of luck with the show. Thank you, guys. Okay. Bye. All right. Thank Bye. you so much. Bye.